So imagine you're dealing with someone who's hoarding. There's like 10,000 things in their house. There's maybe 100 boxes, and you open up a box, and in the box there's some pens and some old passports and some checks and their, their collection of silver dollars and some hypodermic needles and some dust and, you know, a dead mouse. And there's boxes and boxes and boxes like that in the house. It's absolute chaos in there. Absolute chaos, not order. Chaos. And then you think, is that their house or is that their being? Is that their mind? And the answer is, there's no difference. There's no difference. So, you know, I could say, well, if you want to organize your psyche, you could start by organizing your room. You go clean up under your bed and you make your bed and you organize the papers on your desk and you think, well, just exactly what are you organizing? Are you organizing the objective world or are you organizing your field of being, your field of total experience? And Jung believed that, and I think this, there's a Buddhist doctrine that's sort of nested in there, that at the highest level of psychological integration, there's no difference between you and what you experience. And it's very useful to think that way because you might ask, what could you do to improve yourself? Well, let's step one step backwards. The first question might be, why should you even bother improving yourself? And I think the answer to that is something like, so you don't suffer any more stupidly than you have to. It's not some casual self-help doctrine. It's that if you don't organize yourself properly, you'll pay for it, and in a big way, and so will the people around you. And you could say, well, I don't care about that, but that's actually not true. You actually do care about that, because if you're in pain, you will care about it. It's very rare that you can find someone who's in excruciating pain who would ever say, well, it would be no better if I was out of this. You get your act together so that there isn't any more stupid pain around you than necessary. I like the, I like the idea of the room because you can do that at the drop of a hat. You know, you go back to where you live and sit down and think, okay, I'm gonna make this place better for half an hour. What should I do? You have to ask and things will just pop up like mad and it's partly because your mind is a very strange thing as soon as you give it a name a genuine aim it'll reconfigure the world in keeping with that aim that that's actually how you see to begin with and so if you set it a task especially you have to be genuine about it which is why you have to bring your thoughts and emotions together and then you have to get them in your body so you're acting consistently you have to be genuine about the aim but once you aim, the world will reconfigure itself around that aim, which is very strange.